Hello, it is Tuesday, August 8th, 2023. I'm Chris Remo, and welcome back to the New York Times Crossword Daily Solve. It's a Tuesday crossword today, which means we should, as yesterday, have a fairly approachable uh, themed crossword for us today. And um, that means it should be relatively approachable. I don't really know where I was going with that. shouldn't be too difficult a crossword. And in any case, this hopefully approachable edition of the Daily Solve has been brought to us by Aaron Spiller, over full hitbox, Jake Rodkin, and, as always, the indomitable Shoalmaster and the incredible Horan family. So thank you so much to the five of them, benefactors of the Daily Solve Patreon campaign, for their generous support. They are keeping this series going and sustaining this channel. For that, I am incredibly appreciative. So thank you so much to them. Thank you to everybody uh, who is a backer of the Patreon campaign at any level. I really do appreciate it. And, um, If you'd like to join them and become a member of the Patreon campaign, support this channel, you can head over to patreon.com slash daily solve or click the link in the description field underneath the video. And there you can find, of course, all of the bonus videos um, available to backers, such as the uh, most recent New York Times cryptic crossword that I solved on Sunday. That was the Sunday cryptic crossword. And I think Today, I forget, it's either today or tomorrow, the monthly bonus puzzle is going live, the New York Times monthly bonus puzzle for August, which, oh no, what was it today? Was it, I think it was India Pale Ale Day, I think it was this month, which is uh, certainly a holiday that I'm sure you all, you all celebrated on the first Thursday of the month, which I think is when it was celebrated. In any case, um, that's, that's that for the Patreon campaign. Thank you to everybody who's a backer. And... Uh, you can also join the Daily Solve Discord chat server. There's a link to that in the description field. It's a nice, friendly chat community, and um, you might want to check it out. And finally, please do subscribe to the YouTube channel if you've not yet done so. That's a big help as well. Thanks to everybody who's done so. All right, let's get on to today's crossword. This is a construction by Zachary David Zachary David Levy, who's constructed a small handful of puzzles for the New York Times, and it was edited as always, by Will Shorts. So it is a Tuesday crossword. It will have a theme. It shouldn't be too difficult. And let's find out if that's the case. Let's start solving. Bit of foolish mockery. Um, I mean, the first thing that came to mind is joke, but that doesn't seem sufficient, really. L.L. Bean competitor. It'll be a clothing manufacturer. Like a cheering crowd in five letters. A roar, maybe? Let's see if that helps here. Bit of foolish mockery. Maybe not a joke, maybe a, a jape. A jape at somebody's expense? Let's see. Words on a check. Pay, pay to. A check indicates uh, to whom it should be uh, paid. And uh, discarded computers and such are... Oh, it's an e-waste. I think this is an e-word we've not... At least I don't remember having seen before. I think this is a legitimate e-word because it does... Electronic waste is actually qualitatively different than many other categories of waste and often need to be disposed differently. So I think this is a valid, this is an e-word that I don't intrinsically object to. Sticking point. Something could stick in your craw can kind of be a point of frustration for you. And so that suggests to me the L.L. Bean competitor is J. Crew. These are two um, clothing designers and retailers. This looks like royal something. Best poker hand in most poker variants. Royal, Royal flush. I certainly recognize that as being uh, an excellent hand, the, the best hand, I suppose. Legal claim. Oh, and so there, this is thematic somehow. I wonder what this. I wonder what this bar means here. I mean, I guess this means we're treating the words royal and flush separately in some manner. Not quite sure how just yet. A legal claim could be a lien. Maybe a lien is put on your home. The the bank puts a lien on, makes puts a claim on it because of non-payment of mortgage or something. Totally wipes out. If one totally wipes out, one eats it. And then we filled out this rote as well. If you got something down on paper, you wrote it. A liberal group with the, you could say the left. Um, And part of ATV, ATV stands for all-terrain vehicle. So uh, all, I guess, would be the, the bit. Composer known as the March King. I suspect this would be John Philip Sousa. I'm sure I've seen that name before. Certainly known for for marches, and I think was in the puzzle for for the same reason recently. Big name in printers, I think Epson. Is it Epsom or Epson? I think it's Epson, uh, unrelated to Epson. Move as paintings in an art exhibit. 
move, as in move you, as in move you emotionally? What is, what is going on there? Surgical tool with an acronymic name, LASER. So LASER is one of those acronyms that has become so completely absorbed into the language that we don't even parse it as an acronym anymore. Opt for a drive-through wedding maybe is to elope, to have a wedding kind of secretly or on the spur of the moment. So what is this? Oh, rehang. You rehang paintings. You move them. I see. Yes, you'd rehang paintings in an art exhibit. You'd, re you'd move them. To completely drench somebody would be to soak them. A city with the Temple of the Golden Pavilion. Hmm, wish I could just recognize this immediately, but I don't seem to be able to. Carrying case worn without a strap. Oh, a fanny pack. This is a sort of particular North American phrase, I believe. Um, uh, you wear it uh, around your waist. Uh, why do I still not see what this is? What about this one? Sticky stuff. Glue? Just like that. Poof, maybe it's not glue. Oh, goop must be. Bit of chocolate flavored cereal. Not sure. Infant's ail ailment, colic. You could have a colicky baby. And to move furtively is to sneak, presumably. Let's check the crosses on that. Discreetly includes on an email. If you discreetly include someone, you BCC them, you blind carbon copy them so the other recipients are not able to see that inclusion. Neighbor of a night could be maybe on a chessboard. Ah, it is on a chessboard. This is a rook. This is not sneak, but rather skulk, which is better. To move furtively is to skulk. To sneak, you could sneak around maybe by skulking, but the skulking is the bit that really implies the furtive movement specifically, I think. Um, I think sneak would work as well, but skulk is better. Alternative to a camisole, perhaps, could be a bra. You could wear a bra rather than a camisole. Human rights organization, I mean, they're not necessarily strictly alternatives, I guess, but they can be. Human rights organization, uh, ACLU, um, the uh, American Civil Liberties Union, and then a bit of cho chocolate, oh, cocoa something, cocoa pops. Um, yeah, that looks right. Uncompromising could be, what, no, well, this is, oh, Temple of the Golden, Kyoto, it must be Kyoto, Japan. Okay, there we go, that must be it. Does that help me with this? Uncompromising. Um, I don't know. I still don't see it somehow. Prefix with physics. Geophysics? Um, doesn't sound right. Uh, wicked spell. Hex. Uncompromising. Surely. Oh, maybe this isn't. Oh, no, 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 no. This isn't Cocoa Pops. It can't be because it's a single bit. It's a single bit of, of chocolate flavored cereal. It's not plural. Uh, what is it then? I don't know. Uh, uncompromising though could be tough. Prefix with, fi oh, maybe it is geophysics. Sly character of multiple fate. Well, the fox is often a sly character. Uh, sly character. So Cocoa Puff, that must be the answer. And then this looks like coffee or toffee. Likely contents of a cup with a green siren logo. Oh, right. That would be Starbucks coffee. This logo is indeed a green siren. Uh, you don't often see her described as a, as a siren in the logo, but that, that would be correct. Really like. To fancy someone is to really like them or a thing. Singer with the 5X Platinum album, Shepherd Moons, would be Enya. Mirror image could be you. You are the, if you look in a mirror, you see yourself. And if you will do something ASAP, you could say on it. It's in quotation marks, so it's also something that would be stated in the answer. 1950s prez would be Ike, Dwight D. Eisenhower's nickname. Uh, to squeal would be to yelp. Groove for a letter-shaped bolt, a T slot, I suppose. Uh, that looks perfectly plausible. You could have a T bolt. And then vein contents uh, could be ores. So you could have a vein of ore in a mine, for instance. And a Red Cross training subject in brief would be CPR. Um, you could learn CPR to, uh, to perform in emergency situations if you're training in the Red Cross. 
cardiopulmonary resuscitation. Is that what that stands for? And others, Latin et al. Seattle's former NBA team to fans. Oh, right. I I know this from having lived in Seattle for a year or two. Um, the Supersonics. So the Sonics, I think, much, much a much rude depart, uh, departure in, in Seattle. Much lamented. Clan symbol, a totem, as in a, a totem pole. Could be the symbol, um, kind of tribal symbol. Uh, actress Raymond of Malcolm in the Middle. No idea, unfortunately. Utopias are Edens, maybe, referencing the Garden of Eden, biblical Garden of Eden. Inspirational figures for artists and poets. Muse, you could be someone's muse, you could inspire them. And film in France could be cine. Um, uh, so obviously, same root as the word cinema. And then cheekiness is sass. Right, still not sure about this. Atalia, maybe, looks like it could be a name that fits here. What about this one? Uh, this looks like Xanadu. Utopian, lo yes, uta lo Utopian locale in a Coleridge poem. So uh, in Xanadu did Kublai Khan a stately pleasure dome decree. Um, this does look like Talia, doesn't it? It really seems like it must be. Oh no, it's maybe it's not. It's Tanya because this would be lines. Borders represented four times in this puzzle, both in the grid and on a map. Um, state lines? I'm trying to fit, think what would fit in five letters there. Why would that be true? Um, both in the grid four times. What would be on a map specifically four times? I'm not sure. 1990s TV heroine with a sidekick named Gabrielle. It must be Xena Warrior Princess, which I, I'm sure I saw a number of episodes of back when it was airing. She-Ra's twin brother. Is she, I think she is She-Ra He-Man. He that came up in the crossword a few weeks ago. I'm pretty sure. Um, brimless Cap could be... Oh, a Tam. A tam Yeah, that, that would be that would be a plausible answer there, I think. Perfume could be an aroma, an odor, a smell. San Antonio landmark, the Alamo. Remember it. Oops. Okay. Uh, in Texas. What more than half of the human body is composed of? Certainly that would be water. This is state lines. Are these state abbreviations? That was my first thought, but this looks odd. I mean, it would have to be Florida backwards, FL. This one, I guess, would be South Carolina. Here, YP, PY. Uh, I don't know. I'm not sure. I'm, I'm missing something about this, I think. I mean, it, they could be states as in countries, uh, nation states, um, but I don't, I'm not sure that helps me. Okay, analog clock feature, a dial, dial of a clock. Country singer Yearwood, I have heard of Trisha Yearwood, I bet that's the answer. This looks like it's going to be Angkor Wat. It is, Buddhist temple built in the early 12th century, great. Uh, is it? No, sorry. <laughs> um, I just, this W-A-T here as, as one word is pretty distinctive, so... That looked like that's what it was going to be. Um, let's see if that fits. Mother Hen's entourage could be her brood of, of chicks, I suppose. And then position in a hierarchy could be one's rank. Uh, to tie the knot is to... Um, is to tie the knot to get engaged or to become married? I'm actually not... You'd think that would be a, an obvious enough idiom to me, but I'm not... To tie the knot... I think it's getting married. Anyway, security officer with an eye on teller transactions would be a bank guard. Right, there we go. The bank guard keeps an eye on the transactions at the uh, teller windows in order to, I suppose, um, either spot or prevent theft. Chem class component, chemistry class component, but it's chemistry is abbreviated, so the answer likely will be as well. And that is, I don't know. School in the SEC. So I think of the SEC as the Ex Securities and Exchange Commission, which is a financial instruments regulator in the United States. But that must not be what this is. Must be uh, it must be some sort of conference, some kind of athletic conference. But I don't. Yeah, unfortunately, I don't know. So it could be university. Well, it could be you at the beginning or end, I guess. 
chem class component. What about this one? This looks like ulna it is. Relating to an arm bone could be relating to the ulna. The reason I was thinking ulna is because if the U goes at the end, well, basically because this didn't look like it would start with a U, so the U would probably be at the end, in which case, what else would this word be? All right, falcons on a scoreboard. Oh no, we have two, I think we have two sport-related school answers adjacent to one another, parallel. Uh, Saint, oh, Saint, Saint Louis, maybe? So chemistry class component. I don't know what this is. Maybe this isn't SB, because I just keep thinking USB, which obviously is completely incorrect. I guess it could be, oh, Atlanta Falcons. That sounds sort of plausible to me. Maybe that's it. Oh, chem lab, chem class component lab, chem lab, chemistry laboratory. So then here we have LSU, Louisiana State University. This is a bit tricky here with these two different, uh, I guess I guess this one isn't a school. This one is just sport related, but um, yeah, that's, that's uh, well, there we have it. Needed to get the chem lab to disambiguate it. Point of view would be an angle. Stocking stuff could be um, nylon. Yeah, you could have nylon stockings. School in Manhattan's Washington Square Park, NYU, New York University. Wow, we have quite a few schools today. Uh, glittery 1970s rock genre is glam rock. British nobleman could be a lord. And if something comes to a close, which this crossword's about to do, hopefully it ends. And then some ER personnel are MDs, medical doctors. There we go. So what is it that I'm missing about these? Oh, no, 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 no. I was completely wrong in my interpretation. Sorry, these aren't two letter abbreviations. I was, I was mislaid. I, I was sort of misguided here because of the possibility of this being Southern Carolina, South Carolina. Indeed, this is Kansas. Here we have, I think, Colorado, Alabama, uh, Florida, New York, Pennsylvania, uh, Kansas, Colorado, Oregon, Wa and Washington. Okay, those are the state lines. I see. Borders represented. Right. I understand. Sorry, I didn't read the revealer very well. I know. I, I know. I do that sometimes. I, I don't properly parse it. Sorry. I need to make sure that I pay more attention to the revealer. In this case, the borders are between two states. You must have been wondering why I wasn't taking that into account. I'm wondering the same thing. In any case the border separates these states. So we have four state lines, which means eight states. And um, I would imagine if you don't have a U.S. cultural context, it would be pretty difficult to recognize most of these state abbreviations. Well, maybe not most, but certainly all. I don't know. I shouldn't guess on behalf of other people, but uh, it would be more difficult, I guess. In any case, you don't need to. All you have to do is fill out the ordinary clues and the theme completes itself. No need to recognize it if you uh, are not interested in doing so. But in this case, I finally did. <laughs> a little bit late. But there we go. Uh, we did have four state lines with eight states represented. And that was the Tuesday crossword. And let me just look at the time. I do have time for clues from yesterday's puzzle. So let's do that. Let's discuss from some comments left on yesterday's puzzle about yesterday's clues. And what do we have? So, ah, right, this was a good point that I was, I think was scratching at my mind yesterday regarding the phrase um, energy vampire. And I uh, I think this was related to my wondering about the age of it because John Mayhew points out, I'd never encountered the term energy vampire before, but from way back, I well remember the similar term emotional vampire. Without wishing to draw undue attention to my age, that term was in use before most people knew what the internet was, and trolls only worried billy goats and hobbits. Kathleen Quinn agreed, same here. And yes, I, I completely agree. That I, that I was unable to, sum, my brain did not summon that, that phrase yesterday, but it's absolutely true that emotional vampire has certainly, as a phrase, been around much longer. Energy vampire, much more um, recently deployed. And I, as Yakushi points out, that is seemingly because the phrase energy vampire is a fantasy creature of folklore that's been modernized to refer to people who exhaust you. I wonder if maybe there's a relation to, say, how company affects introverts. Yes, an introvert of, of enjoys the company of their friends, but might require a nap or alone time afterwards. Kevin Dunn adds, I think it's more nefarious than that. 
uh, these energy vampires are typically people who complain a lot, make everything about themselves, need constant attention, are always involved in some drama, are codependent. I think that would suck the emotional energy out of everyone. I think that's true, but I also think it is difficult to precisely determine how that um, distinguishes itself from emotional vampire. And I think I do agree with Yakushi that the idea of an energy vampire has sort of crossed over from more of a literal kind of uh, supernatural interpretation to being used in that way. And that is exactly how it's used in the program, what we do in the shadows, where the idea is that that is the sort of literal supernatural uh, property of of the the energy vampire character in that show, but it's being used as a metaphor for that actual sort of person in life. All right. Anyway, we'll move on from that. Uh, oh no, we won't move on from that. Wow, look at this. The English Frank C points out the English singer songwriter Peter Hamill credits his erstwhile Vandergraaf generator colleague, violinist Graham Smith with coining the term energy vampires in the 1970s in order to describe intrusive, overzealous fans. Hamill included a song of the same name on his 1978 album, The Future Now. That's amazing. So so that specific phrase in this more metaphorical sense does, in fact, date back decades. Okay, well, that was new information to me. So, all right, now we will move on from the energy vampires bit. So we've sort of covered, I think, every possible angle of that from the linguistic to the metaphorical, to the mythological. All right, but finally, to close it out, Dragon Traces, who often corrects my pronunciation, uh, does so again, in this case pointing out that the capital of South Dakota is pronounced Pier rather than Pierre. Sorry about that. I don't actually think I was aware of that, so um, hence my mispronunciation. Thank you for the correction. There we have it. All right, and that is all I had earmarked from yesterday's puzzle. Thank you, as always, to everybody who left comments. And... I'll be back tomorrow with the Wednesday crossword. When we maybe take a little bit of a step up in difficulty, we will continue, of course, to have the theme present in a crossword in the crossword. And I hope you join me then. But until that point, please do have an excellent remainder of your Tuesday. Take care. Mm-hmm.